Hello. So today I want to talk about how dynamics constrains probabilities in general probabilistic theories. And this is joint work with Luis Masanes. Okay, so general probabilistic theories, also known as, G as GPTs, are this kind of wider family of operational theories of which quantum theory, here pictured in this circle, and classical property theory are just instances. And so we have this whole wide range of families um, and it's described in this operational framework. So in case you haven't come across GPTs before, I just want to give you a kind of example of what one of the alternative theories might look like, okay, what they correspond to, just, just to give you an intuitive picture. So here I'm considering a very simple prepare and measure scenario. We have a preparation box capital P and a measurement box capital M. We have a classical input, which is a choice of preparation, here denoted with small p. Okay, so it outputs the system, which goes along this line into the measurement box M. And then we have a choice of measurement and the uh, box outputs a measurement outcome A. Now this whole setup has associated to it a probability of obtaining outcome A given the input choices M and P. Now in quantum theory, this probability is computed, is calculated using the Born rule. Okay, so we take the trace, the density operator corresponding to the preparation and the uh, projector corresponding to the outcome in the case of a projector measurement. But one could very well imagine um, a, a different theory where the probabilities are no longer comp computed using this rule. Okay, This would be an ex instance of a different GPT. Um, also, I want to note to add that it may be the case in this different theory that preparations are no longer associated to density operators, measurement outcomes are no longer associated to projectors or to POVM elements. Okay, so now in this kind of picture I had earlier, um, there's quantum theory, classical probability theory, there's, for instance, box world, okay, which is a theory which allows for maximally non-local correlations in kind of Bell type scenarios. Here I've put a number of question marks, okay, of other theories which we do not yet no. So this isn't obviously an exhaustive picture, there are some other examples of GPTs, um, but to my mind there are, are not that many that we know of, and some of them, like real vector space quantum theory, are somehow um, very close or can be embedded in quantum theory itself. So part of the motivation of this talk is to kind of explore what these other theories are, okay, to kind of classify them. Now I want to and there's been a lot of work done in general probabilistic theories, okay, and for instance, people have you know, just taken the general framework, okay, so studied kind of all theories in the kind of very general language and study things like thermodynamics, measurement and compatibility, certain information theoretic games, okay. So there's been a whole vein of work which hadn't really asked what the different theories are, has just tried to study um, general features of all possible theories in the abstract, or what requirements one needs um, to see certain effects in different theories. Um, but I still think it's important, even for that type of work, it's even relevant for that type of work, to kind of know what the other theories are. So what are we describing when we talk about GPTs other than quantum theory, for instance, okay? Good, so yes, the statement I'm making is there are few known full non-classical GPTs, and how can we generate, okay, or find more GPTs? So I think to do this, I want to explore um, just single systems. And a lot of this talk will be just about single systems and so not full theories. And towards the end, I'll kind of discuss composite systems more and um, suggest some directions for future work. But let's look at a single system, single GPT system. So a single sy GPT system has a set of states, which is a convex set, as pictured here, and a set of effects here, okay, which has a bit of additional structure, but is also convex. Okay, so in quantum theory, the set of states are given by density operators, okay, and the set of effects are given by P of M elements. Um, and the probability is computed via the trace here, okay. And a general GPT system will have a set of states which is convex, okay, S, set of effects which also has a structure, this convex E, and we can embed them in some real vector spaces and compute probabilities via this inner product. Okay. I also want to mention transformations briefly. So transformations are linear maps which take states to states, okay? And there's a subset of transformations, the reversible transformations, 
which um, are such that for any transformation R, which is reversible, there exists an inverse. And if you compose them sequentially, you get the identity and also the way around. I want to add that um, effects can be viewed as linear maps on states, and states are linear maps on effect, okay, because of the um, you know, product I showed before. Good. So now I will kind of answer the first um, question I had about how can we generate um, uh, all possible GBTs. Well, in the case of single systems, if one takes any convex set S and any set E of separating linear functionals on S, okay, so here I don't want to go into the details too much. Um, and in this talk, I'll kind of use linear, convex, and affine interchangeably. Okay. Um, but if you have any questions for, for me to be more precise, please feel free to ask them at the end. Okay, so any set of separating linear functionals on S subject to some conditions, well, take S and E together, you have a GPT system, okay? Um, and just to go through these conditions. So we have, for every effect in E, E naturally takes S to zero, one, because we want it to be a probability. We have that there exists a unit effect, so it's an effect in E which evaluates to one on every state, U of S equals one. E is closed under coarse graining and convex combinations. And also we impose that for every E, there exists a complement effect, such that all effects can be belong to a measurement. Okay, so if you picture the whole space of GPT systems, what is it? It's a space of essentially all possible convex sets S combined with um, a set E of separating linear functionals. So this kind of answers our first question, but it might not be a very satisfactory answer because we don't really want to know what's the generic form of a GPT. We want to kind of classify different GPTs. And the way I'm going to do this in the present talk is to classify it by looking at something called the dynamical structure. Okay, so I'm going to classify families of GPTs which have the same dynamical structure. Okay, an important component of the dynamical structure is a set of pure states. So what are pure states? Well, in this convex set here, I've pictured here with the blue arrows, these kind of extremal points are pure states. And these are states which cannot be written as convex combinations of two other states. So if here I state omega A and state omega B, omega here is a convex combination of the two, a non-trivial convex combination of the two. Again, any state which cannot be written as a non-trivial combination of two states is a pure state. Okay, so if you picture a square state space, it has four pure states, okay? And so the pure states of the square is just a set with four elements in it. So now onto dynamical structure. So the dynamical structure of a system is its set of pure states X, the dynamical group G acting on the set of pure states, okay? And the group action, here's technicality, which takes, you know, tells you how G acts on X. So in the case of quantum theory, the pure states correspond to the set of rays on some d-dimensional complex space. Um, the dynamical group is SUD, okay, and the group actions are given by psi maps to u psi. Okay, so this is now I'm kind of classifying systems and describing systems in terms of a dynamical structure, so I can compare systems with the same dynamical structure. So systems have a dynamical structure, but they also have what's called a probabilistic structure. Okay, and the probabilistic structure is just a set here, calligraphic F. And it's a set of outcome probability functions, OPF. Okay, and these are the, the functions that tell you what the probabilities of different outcomes are. So naturally, an OPF takes every element of your set of pure states to the zero one interval, gives you a probability. Okay, and this condition such that they form measurements, uh, they exist a unit OPF, they're closed under convex combinations, of course, grainings, there's the complement, and they're closed under the group action. Okay, so this might remind you of um, how we defined the effects. Okay, so now what I call a system is some dynamical structure, so a set X and a group acting on that set, and a set of OPFs. Now, I won't go into this here, but from this, we can derive the state and effect space, which is S, Okay, the set of states, and E, the set of effects. So every pure state will be mapped to an extremal set, an extremal state of the, the state space, 
Again, every f in f will be mapped to an effect. Good. And elements of the group will be mapped to linear transformations on s. Good. So we saw that when we had this system described previously with just the pure states x, in order to obtain the state space, we need to discuss ensembles and mixed states. Okay, so what's an ensemble? Omega is just we have some set of pure states with an associated probability distribution over these. Okay, so in quantum theory, an example would be uh, the zero state with probability a half and the one state with probability one. Okay, now it turns out that certain ensembles are equivalent. So in quantum theory, the ensemble corresponding to 50 50 of zero one and the 50 50 of plus minus are equivalent. Okay, and so in the ge general sense, so equivalent if they give the same outcome probabilities for all the OPFs, okay, where the OPFs extend to the ensembles in the natural way. And so what is the set of mixed states is just the equivalence classes of ensembles. So any two ensembles which cannot be distinguished by the OPFs um, are mapped to the same mixed state. Okay, so in the case of quantum theory, if the ensemble one half zero, one half one is mapped to this mixed state, okay, for the qubit. And similarly, the plus minus is also mapped to this mixed state. Okay, so mixed states in this convex set are equivalence classes of ensembles. So, okay, so now you may be wondering, um, what's it, so how does having different um, sets of OPFs for the same set of mixed states affect the space of ensembles? Well, here I have an example. I have a circle embedded in three dimensions, okay? Good. Now, if I take the convex hull of this circle, I see that the I have the one state here, the pure state one, minus zero and plus. The 50-50 mixture of zero and one, omega, gives a state which is very different from the 50-50 mixture of plus minus. Okay, so this here, this convex set, is a state space of a system which has Pure states, which are a circle here, yeah, okay? Pure states are a circle, but different mixed states. In other words, different OPFs. Good. So in the OPF framework, we have that GPTs have a dynamical structure and a probabilistic structure. So in quantum theory, the dynamical structure are the rays, the pure states are rays, and the reversible dynamical group SUD. And the probabilistic structure is a set of all functions given here by the Born rule. And so what I want to do is define families of GPTs which share a common dynamical structure, but which differ in their probabilistic structure. And then I can show that we can classify all GPTs with a given dynamical structure. And so the two examples of the circle were to show you pictures of two systems which had the same pure states, okay, the same dynamical structure, but different probabilistic structure. I'm going to be interested in a specific type of dynamical structure, which is a transitive dynamical structure. Again, this means that any two pure states belonging to the uh, set X are such that they're related by a transformation in the dynamical group. Okay, and an example of a transitive dynamical structure. Okay, so here for the block sphere, just the pure states of the sphere, we have that any two points of the sphere are related by a rotation in SO3. Okay, and this will be important later. For dynamic, for transitive um, spaces, we have that if I take a point and I take the set of all rotations, which leaves it invariant. Okay, so here's rotations around Z, and here we have rotations around X. These two subgroups are isomorphic as groups. They're both SO2 subgroups. And we can write the full space X as a full group G mod modulo the stabilizer subgroup. Okay, so we have systems, okay, and we have um, systems that have the same dynamical structure, but different probabilistic structure, so that they, the state spaces are two convex sets. Here we have a circle embedded in two dimensions, here a circle embedded in three dimensions. Okay, and so every pure state here is mapped to a two-dimensional vector on the circle, and here every pure state is mapped to a three-dimensional vector, okay. And every group element, okay, which acts on the set of pure states is mapped to a two by two matrix, okay, acting on, on all possible states. And similarly here, every um, rotation is mapped now to a three dimensional uh, matrix, okay? So these are two different representations of the dynamical group. 
So every system has associated to it a representation of the dynamical group. Okay, so now I can present the first theorem um, of this talk, okay, which is the classification theorem. And it tells us that for a given system with dynamical structure GH, okay, so since they're transitive, we can just specify the group and stabilize a subgroup. Every probabilistic structure F has an associated representation gamma, which is of this form, where each term gamma has at least one trivial subrepresentation when restricted to H. Then we have a converse where every representation of this form is associated to at least one probabilistic structure. So for the purpose of this talk, I'm going to gloss over any um, technicalities due to the fact we're talking about real irreducible representations as opposed to complex irreducible. Um, so I'm going to use inter these interchangeably. So now part three tells us that when G and H are a Gelfan pair, the correspondence between representations and probabilistic structures is one to one. I'm going to go into more detail about um, Gelfan pairs and restricted representations shortly. But when G and H do not form a Gelfand pair, then we have some representations of this form which have infinitely many uh, probabilistic stru structures associated to it. In other words, for certain pairs, G, H, okay, so for certain systems, it's the case that we can classify them. All possible systems with a dynamical structure G, H can be classified via certain representations of G. Okay, and this is systems corresponding to Gelfand pairs. But for other systems, they can't be classified because there's certain rest. They can't be classified, sorry, using solely representations because for a given representation, there's infinitely many systems um, associated to that representation. Okay. So, what do I mean by a Gelfand pair? Okay, so a Gelfand pair is a, a group of a, a pair of a group G and a subgroup H of G, where for all irreducible representations of G, the restriction to the subgroup H has a most, at most one trivial subrepresentation. Okay, so maybe this is better illustrated with an example. If I have a three-dimensional representation of SO3, okay, so your three by three rotation matrices, if I restrict to an SO2 subgroup, so I only consider rotations around the z-axis, for instance, then I obtain a group of matrices which has the following forms. It has a one, the Z component, and here a two by two representation of SO2. Okay, so this is a restriction, and we see that it has a single uh, trivial sub representation of SO2 as well as the standard representation here. So this is an example of a Gelfand pair. Good. Okay, so to restate, for GH a Gelfand pair, every system GH, so with X given by this, the group G and F is in one-to-one -one correspondence with spherical representations of GH, okay? So it doesn't matter what spherical representations are here, it's just we can um, classify all these systems via representations. So in the case of quantum theory, G is SUD and H is SUD minus one times U1. And um, Luis and I did this in previous work. We classified all possible systems, okay, which have the same pure states as quantum theory. Um, another thing we do in this work, which here I'll just skip over because of time, is we can then um, find other systems. Okay, so we study a family of systems called Grassmann systems, okay, which have pure states, which instead of being given by the pure states of quantum theory, okay, so the space, pure states of quantum theory are rays, so one-dimensional subspaces. We can consider systems whose pure states are given by k-dimensional subspaces. So we can classify all systems which have um, the dynamical structure of Grassmann manifolds via the spherical irreducible representations um, of SUD and SUD minus k cross U, that should be UK. And so this recovers um, quartic quantum theory, which is a specific example of the Grassmann manifold theories. And quartic quantum theory is, is not a full theory, it's just a set of systems um, which has been studied before. 
Okay, so now the question is, what about systems associated to non-gel fan pairs? Okay, well, we introduced a notion called rigidity of pro probabilistic structures. Okay, and so a probabilistic structure F0 of which every other probabilistic structure F1 of the same linear dimension is at a finite bounded distance is called rigid. And I want to emphasize that um, you could imagine that you can kind of uh, have a distance between probabilistic structure, which is infinitesimal, if you just change the effects. So here I have the block sphere, okay, with effects like this. I just add a small amount of noise, and then I have a probabilistic structure or a different system, which is a very small um, distance away. Again, we're not talking about this type. We're talking about changes to probabilistic structures, which do not preserve the set of mixed states. Okay. And so we have another theorem, which tells us that when you have a system which is gel fanned, any other system with the same pure states, which is um, has a state space of the same linear dimension, is a kind of finitely bounded distance. But in the case of a non gel fan pairs, okay, there are systems for which you can kind of modify the space of mixed states infinitesimally. So the kind of key feature of non gel fan pairs is that their probabilistic structure i.e. the set of mixed states, can be continuously deformed while keeping the linear dimension fixed. And to our knowledge, this is a feature of GPTs which hasn't been highlighted or studied before. Good, so now I want to conclude by discussing composition. So here I've been talking about families of systems. I have not been talking about theories. And so amongst all the possible um, GPT systems, it's not clear how they compose or if they compose. So just to give an example of difficulties you may run in, if you take a dynamical structure, some set of dynamical structures, x1, x2, and you write down some composition rule for pure states, in general, there may not be any probabilistic structures which give operationally well-defined systems with this composition rule. Okay, so for instance, um, with Luis and Marcus Muller, we showed that um, the only probabilistic structures compatible with the dynamical structure and composition, pure state compositional structure of quantum theory are quantum systems themselves. So all the alternative systems, okay, which have different measurements, cannot compose in a way which is consistent with the pure state composition rule of quantum theory. There's another preprint here which shows um, kind of a different approach, okay, which, which assumed the probabilistic structure of quantum theory and the dynamical structure of quantum theory, so quantum systems, and showed that the only valid composition when you had quantum systems was the tensor product composition. Okay, so this is just to say that when studying composition, this will add uh, quite a few more constraints on the systems being studied. And I just want to finish with a, a picture. Um, so this is something we do in the work. The, this is a kind of more precise picture of the space of GPT theories, okay, of, of GPTs rather. I'm just looking at transitive systems with compact pure states. We have that this is, you know, amongst all transitive systems, most of them in a kind of very vague sense are non-rigid. Then we have the family of rigid ones. And then there we have, we classify, talk about two point homogeneous systems. Um, and we have quantum theory here, just an example of um, systems which have different dynamic, different probabilistic structures and so forth. So I think I will end here and um, yeah, I welcome any questions. Thank you.